But traditionally, uh, it's all done on cappella. Right. Yeah. Not nothing wrong with. Uh... <laughs> yeah. So I should make some explanation. So we're going to be doing the um, practice of the Bodhisattva of Compassion, Avalokiteshvara. So here in um, Sedona, there's a stupa of uh, Buddha Amitabha. So um, Chenrezig of Avalokiteshvara is relate is 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 one of the two bodhisattvas. Bodhisattva is someone who has made the commitment that he will continue praying for and helping all beings uh, until they reach enlightenment. So they take that vow. It's a, called the Bodhisattva vow. And there are two bodhisattvas connected with the Buddha Amitabha. Um, so the Buddha Amitabha has to do with... Uh, so there are five Buddha families, and the Buddha Amitabha is, is related to um, converting attachment to um, discriminating awareness. So... Discriminating awareness is first we see something and then we know what we see, that's discriminating awareness. Then we think, oh, I see this. That's already thought proliferation and conceptualizing. So the discriminating awareness is to be able to just see things the way they are. And that transforms our attachment because we're not attached, we just, we don't go beyond being present at the moment and knowing exactly what we're experiencing, which is the description. And that's connected with the stupa that's here, the stupa of the Buddha Amitabha. And Chenrezig is the Bodhisattva connected with Amitabha, but he is uh, connected with um, compassion. And he has a mantra, Om Mani Pemahong, which has six syllables. And each syllable uh, overcomes the um, negative emotional states of what's called six realms. So if you're stuck in anger, that's like called the hell realm. And then the hung, uh, well, I should go the other way around. Om, if you start with Om, then pride is that uh, leads you to be like a god realm. And so uh, my wife and I were at the 100th anniversary of some Harvard professor and all the people there won Nobel Prizes, and I'm very proud of themselves. We are special, you know. So that's the God realm. <laughs> so Om purifies the pride, and uh, Ma purifies um, jealousy, Ni purifies attachment, Pad purifies uh, ignorance, Me purifies uh, stinginess, and hong anger. So the mantra, Om Mani Padma Hong, transforms six negative emotional states into their enlightened form. So, otherwise I would be here all day if I start explaining all of Buddhism. So, um, so the idea of doing uh, this kind of practice, which is called a creation and completion phase practice, is first... Um, you become the Bodhisattva of Compassion. So that's to um, give you confidence that your true nature is perfect. So if you're Hindu, I am that. We were just looking at the book. <laughs> that Soham. So that's non-conceptual. That's beyond concepts. And in Buddhism, we call that the union of... Uh, compassion and emptiness. So there are lots of terminologies, but the whole point of imagining that you're already enlightened in the form of a bodhisattva of compassion or any of the other Tibetan visualization practices is to deconstruct thinking of yourself as just me, 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 me. Instead, I'm the bodhisattva of compassion. My purpose is to free all beings from all their negative emotional states. So that's 
why you become the Bodhisattva of compassion when you say, Om Mani Padme, Om Mani Padme, and then there's a visualization of sending good vibes out to the beings in all the different directions, purifying them of their six negative emotional states. And once you have developed that, you want to call it divine pride, thinking I am that, or I, my, my true nature is no different than that of the Buddha, then you dissolve everything, let everything just dissolve into this very spacious place, non-conceptual, the way Buddhists describe it as non-conceptual spaciousness endowed with knowingness, vivid clarity and compassion, then at that moment you get a s experience of the true nature of your mind. What is that I am that? Or uh, what is your Buddha nature? I mean, you can't describe it with words, that's why, so the practice of first create, thinking your <coughs> bodhisattva of compassion and then saying Om Mani Padme, Om Mani Padme Hong many, many times um, is, is to deconstruct your clinging to a me and also creating uh, good, good vibrations to purify six negative emotional states and then you let everything go and you just rest in your true nature, beyond concepts, beyond duality. So that's how these Buddhist uh, pujas are constructed. And so, <clears throat> I guess we'll start. And then there are some preliminary prayers which are called taking refuge. So you take refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. And... <clears throat> So, Buddha just symbolizes your true nature. The Dharma are the teachings that help you eliminate your obscurations that prevent you from experiencing your true nature. And the uh, Sangha are the fellow travelers who support your practice. So, um, I guess we'll start with that, which so, is... I did send uh, an email out to you guys, if you want to follow along, uh, we just forward to, to Gary. I didn't check my email. Sorry. I didn't check email. Okay, so uh, you have your phone, you can open your email. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have well, a you just uh, follow yeah, along. I I like to to oh, yeah, that would be nice to follow along. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, got yeah, yeah. I, I can uh, get you guys my laptop if you want. Put it over there. <laughs> I, I'd rather not. Okay, but I'll explain each part of the chant. The real important thing is um, when you then, be, after you say a bunch of preliminary prayers to set the um, um, emotional framework, then you say, oh my, you think you're the Bodhisattva of compassion in the Buddha field of the Buddha that's uh, in that stupa that's here, um, Amitabha. And, um, and then you say, Om Mani Padme Hong, you chant it many, many times. And then everything dissolves. The whole environment dissolves into you as the Bodhisattva of Compassion. And in, bo in the Bodhisattva of Compassion's heart is Hri, a seed syllable. And then you imagine that dissolving, and that's the dissolution of the earth dissolving into water dissolving into fire, dissolving into wind, dissolving into space, and then finally getting into a non-dual meditative state. That's the important part. All the rest are uh, prayers which <laughs> to pray that this transformation can actually take place when you're doing this practice. So you make a bunch of aspiration prayers, which is a lot of the, uh, um, and asking for the blessings of all the uh, gurus of this particular lineage of practice to bless your mind stream so that you can actually realize your true nature doing this practice. So I hope that explains it a little bit. So we're going to start... Uh, on the right hand side, it's, let me just reduce this a little bit so I can see what page that is. doesn't say, does it? Seven. 
Uh, on the right hand side, it's 1A. So it's a, we're going to skip praying to all the Buddhas of the lineage and uh, teachers. <clears throat> and we're going to start with going for refuge. And on the right hand side, that's 1A. <clears throat> Da dang dro we nam ke ta dang yam pe sem chen tam che du di ne zong te ji si jang chu ying po la ji ji ba So let me say this refuge prayer three times. Pao den lama damba nang la jam zu ji o ye dong jil gor ji lan zong nang la jam zu ji o san je chum den de nang la jam zu ji o Dham be chu nang la jam zu ji o Bham be gen du nang la jam zu ji o Pao wo kan ro ju jong so me zong Ye je ji chen dang den ba nang la jam zu ji o Palen lama damba nang la jam zu ji o ye dang chil gor ji lan zong nang la jam zu ji o san je chum den de nang la jam zu ji o Dham be ju nang la jam zu ji o Bham be gen du nang la jam zu ji o Pa wo kan ro ju jong zo me zo Ye she ji Dham dem ba nang la jam zu ji o Palen lama damba nang la jam zu ji o Ye dam chil gor ji lan zok nang la jam zu ji o Zan je chom den de nang la jam zu ji o Dham be ju nang la jam zu ji o Bham be gen du nang la jam zu ji o Pao wo gan ro ju jang zo me zo Ye je ji chen dang den ba Nam la jam zu ji om. So then, in uh, Buddhism, this idea, this idea of bodhicitta, that you are practicing not just for yourself to feel good, but so that you can fully awaken. And when you fully awaken, then you can really help other beings from that non-dualistic place. So that's called the generating the mind of enlightenment in order to benefit all sentient beings. And it's chanted uh, three times. Hmm? This is on page 12. Okay? This is the actual beginning of this uh, practice. So think, I wish to fully awaken in order to benefit all sentient beings, and then I can truly lead them to awaken to their true nature. Sanjay Jodam Zonji Jodam La 
called the creation phase. So sometimes you personally become uh, the embodiment of Chen Renzi, but here it's done in two stages. First, you imagine that the Bodhisattva's compassion is on top of your head, uh, looking just like he does on uh, in statues or tantas. And so in, for this particular practice, so the manifestations of compassion are limitless, sometimes two arms, sometimes four arms, sometimes a thousand arms, depending on the uh, intention of the Bodhisattva of compassion. Here he has four arms, <clears throat> and so there's something called the four Brahma Viharas, or the four immeasurables, <clears throat> uh, and those are <clears throat> Loving kindness, compassion, sympathetic joy, and equanimity. So those are four qualities. And there's actually a practice that goes with this. Um, and Sharon Salzberg is the expert that writes books on the four immeasurables. And uh, so the four arms have to do with having these four measurable qualities for this particular visualization. So the next chant is describing um, what does Chen Reze look like in this four-arm manifestation. And he's ha holding a crystal jewel in the first two hands, and then a crystal mala in the right hand, and a lotus flower on the left, if you uh, too bad I didn't bring a picture of the Bodhisattva Compassion in his forearm uh, manifestation. And right now, we are going to imagine that on top of our head, there's um, a lotus flower, and then Chenrezig seed syllable, Hri, and then that transforms into Chenrezig on top of your head. But he's no set, not separate from your true nature. And when, before we um, chant the mantra, Om Mani Pema Hong, then there's going to be um, a radical transformation. The place we're going to be meditating in is no longer this room. We're going to be meditating in the Buddha field of the Buddha that's uh, inside the stupa. But his, his Buddha field is called Dewa Chan. And... We're going to be a form of either a male or female body form of Chen Rezi. So a female form in China, Chen Rezi is female, Quan Yin. And uh, in... Okay. <laughs> That's better, okay. Uh, how do I clip? <laughs> do you want to clip this on somewhere? Um, yeah.
So, but right now, uh, the Bodhisattva of Compassion in this particular practice is sitting on top of your head and everyone else's head in this room. And we're going to, the next verses are just visualizing what he looks like. Da zong gang yam zem chen ji ji zong bengar da wei deng ri le bang jo jen re zi gar za lo zen a den drum Zhe <laughs> Dang Bombay do yo zo Om ba men be yu jen jen Sham yi do jen jil drong jok Dri me na war giam ben ba Giam ne kundu no So now just imagine that um, this forearm version of the Bodhisattva of Compassion is on top of everyone's head, <clears throat> looking just like this statue, perfect, everything works out. <clears throat> so now we, uh, we make, in our minds, we prostrate to uh, Chenrezig, we bow to him. Uh, three times. So actually we're bowing to our intrinsic uh, Buddha nature. So we're not bowing to an ex something external. Tenrezi is just our potential to transform into the union non-dualistic compassion. So when just autumn spontaneously becoming compassionate when the situation calls for it. <clears throat> Jo wo chan ji mang go gun do ga zo zan jen ji yu la jen do jen ji dro la ze chen re zi la chan za So then there's a, a prayer called the Seven Branch Prayer, which is making offerings. It's how you invite a guest into your house with uh, flowers, incense, lamps, perfume, food, music, etc. And then confessing all your unskillful actions. And then rejoicing in whatever skillful actions pe uh, beings do. And then praying that, all, that the Dharma is uh, turned 
to benefit all sentient beings according to their level of understanding, etc. And then dedicating um, the, the goodness of making all these prayers and aspirations so for ourselves to become fully awakened so we can truly benefit all sentient beings. And this is called the seven branch prayer. So it's very traditional in almost all Buddhist pujas. Baba Chen Rezi Wang Dong Jung Jung Dun Zum Jung Baying Gyal Wan Zen Jay Dum La Kun Nen Dem So the next set of prayers have to do with um, Chenrezig appearing in the different realms of existence. So when you're overwhelmed by anger, that's considered being in a hell realm. When you're overwhelmed with stinginess, stinginess that's called a hungry ghost realm. It's described that way. And then when you're overwhelmed with ignorance, that's considered an animal type realm. And when we're clinging, when we have too many attachments, that's the human realm. And then there's jealousy, it's called a jealous God realm. And then I explained before the uh, proud God realm. Uh, so, Omani Pema Hong. And then um, Chen Rezi sending good vibrations sequentially, starting off with the hell realm all the way up to the God realm. We will say Om Mani Padme Hung and think that all the negative emotions, all the beings in these realms suffering from these different negative emotional states, those negative emotional states are purified and that their minds are transformed into the positive side of each of the negative emotional states. 
so uh, this a whole <clears throat> so anger gets transformed into something called mirror-like wisdom that just reflects things, just like a mirror reflects things, not ah, but that anger does become mirror-like wisdom, etc. So all the different negative emotion states gets transformed into a particular type of wisdom and when the next prayer is said that's describing that transformation due to uh, our saying Omani Pema Hong So Mm-hmm. 
Hindi mo ang wangin doon raw Kieng yun day Lengon doon yaw Yung way Sem jen am Gombong yeng yi Trung do Kye wa jom Om mani Te me hom Do me do ne Le nien Sang be Do chag wang yi mi yi Ne zo yi yi Durel bon do nyo Yong wei Sem jen nam De wa jen yi shing do Yewashom Omani Pemehom Dome Dune Lenien Sangbeindu Durando Gwangi Lamin Nezo Gye Damzo Dunya Yongwe Semjenam Bodala Yishindu Kye Om Mani Peme Om Dome Dune Lenien Sang Bindu Nyanjal Wangi Lai Ne Bodong dunya Yong wei Sem jen am Bodala yi shing do Kye wa jom Om mani Te me Dhani Gye Jing Gye Wa Tam Jain Dum Jain Re Zhe Dang Zhe Ba Sung Ba Yi Ma Dang Jing Gye Dronam Dronam Zong Jong Yeng Drok Jong Jor Jem Bar Jom Ban Jong Jela Zowa Tambendum Dagindum Jar Jar Wei Drowanam Lendre Lor Len Ge Wei Le Lan Zom 
So now, because of all our prayers, we imagine that from the Chen Rezis, the, the Bodhisattvas of Compassion, on top of all our heads, light rays go out in all the different directions. All our impure karma, all our confusion, all our delusions, they all get purified. So just imagine that happening right now. So the place we're sitting now becomes up what's called a pure land. Uh, we're in the presence of the Buddha Amitabha. So all the beings are now um, enlightened beings around us, teaching various forms of Dharma. And we ourselves become either male or female emanations of the Bodhisattva of Compassion. So now we're all in... Buddha Amitabha's pure land. We are experiencing our own true nature and we're going to chant. Uh, I guess if, if you want to do it with a harmonium, that's uh, okay. Do you, do you the <clears throat> I think she might um, have a different tune, but you want to play it real quickly so they can hear? Or we can do it a cappella, either way. People, are people used to having harmonium? Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, I can play the notes and then... Uh, she knows how to play it. It's probably best to let her play it. I no, no, I can tell you what, how it, the sound goes. If you start on the... She can only play it her way. She's it's all right. How about you can um, sing it now and I can sing it afterwards? <laughs> okay, that's good. If what? we do it now and she does it after. Yes, I think. Perfect. And then after we chant both a Tibetan version and... Uh, <laughs> An average version. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. We'll do that for 10 minutes, 5 minutes Tibetan version, 5 minutes with harmonium. Uh, then I'll give instructions on how to imagine that everything dissolves into you as the Bodhisattva of Compassion. But I'll just talk you through it, and then you'll just rest in your true nature, however you like to describe that. Okay, so we'll chant it in Tibetan style for five minutes, and then we'll chant it with the harmonium for five minutes, and then we'll go into, uh, Tibetans call this, we'll meditate it, resting in the nature of the mind, or soham, however you want to describe the non-dual Advaita, state of Advaita in Hinduism, and a non-dualistic state, the union of compassion and emptiness is how Tibetans describe that state. Okay? <clears> oh <throat> manim Oh, my name. 
So now it's called the dissolution phase. You imagine that the entire environment dissolves into you as the bodhisattva of compassion. You as the bodhisattva of compassion. There's a seed syllable in your heart, pre, um, and that dissolves from the bottom up. So this is the earth element dissolving into the water element, the water element dissolving into the fire element, the fire element dissolving into the wind, the wind dissolving into space, and finally, space dissolves into non-conceptual spaciousness imbued with knowingness, the nature, your true nature which is beyond description, beyond duality. So just soham. So in Buddhism we sometimes say the teacher's mind, the Buddha's mind, in your mind are all one.
So then the next set of lines have to do with um, never forget that you are inseparable from your true nature. All the sounds you hear are not different than Omani Pemahong. And then you make the aspiration by doing practices like this, you can recognize your true nature, attain the state of the Bodhisattva of compassion, and then from that non-dualistic place, you can really help others reach their true potential. And then we dedicate um, our doing this practice for us to be able to <clears throat> be born in this Buddha field and there just be taught by enlightened beings and then return to this dimension of reality and then benefit other beings having gained full awakening. So that's the next line. And uh, then we just, then we do a standard, just dedicate to all sentient beings after that. <clears throat> Da jen lu nam bom be gu dra dra ying ge drung be yang dren do ye jen jen bo long ge wan di yin yo du da chen re zi wang drum jo ne Ro-wa-ching-jang-ma-lu-ba-de-yi-za-la-go-ba-jong Nin-zang-lu-di-bor-wa-jo-ma-da-de-wa-jen-dun-zong-de-ki-e-wa-jo-ki-e-ma-dang-du-zang-jo-ram-dro-ne-tro-be-cho-jo-shen-dong. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Dharmaya, Namo Sangha. So that is the uh, practice of the Bodhisattva of Compassion. Uh, may it benefit all of you and all sentient beings. Thanks, the harmonium player. Thank you. Very nice. Beautiful. I used to do bhajan so <laughs> a long time ago. Previous life. <laughs> Thank you very much. So if you have any questions, uh, I'm happy to answer any question you have. Looks a bit like uh, one of our cats. <laughs> this is really profound. Um, yeah. oh, I was saying this is very profound. We want to thank you very much for offering this. 
yes. <laughs> I just happened to be here, you know. <laughs> just happened to be here. You know. Just like uh, two days ago, uh, Krishna Das just happened to be in Santa Fe. It was very, I thought, that's interesting. I haven't seen him in five years or so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> You have all the appropriate uh